Epo Maker is of course known for value-based keyboards, meaning their keyboards usually offer a lot of features at a very competitive price relative to the keyboard market. But they also offer a great variety of keyboard models from the traditional to the, well, not traditional. What we have today is the Shadow S, which is a traditional TKL layout plus some extras, including a color LCD screen and QMK firmware while staying at a price point of $99. Let's take a closer look and see if the Shadow S is another good value from Epo Maker. Before we dive in, I wanna mention that Epo Maker sent me the Shadow S for the purpose of reviewing it. I was not paid to make this video and Epo Maker has no input on my review. I do have an affiliate link in the description for you in case you're interested in picking up the Shadow S and you'd like to support this channel. So before we get into specifics, let's just mention that the shadowy relative of the Shadow S is the Shadow X. The Shadow X is technically related here, but really a different keyboard once you start comparing them. Now I don't have one, but just on paper and from images, you can tell they're quite different. First of all, the Shadow X is not a TKL because it's missing the function row. So it's actually an FRL or 70% keyboard. It also has an LCD screen, but in a different position than the Shadow S. It also does not have QMK firmware and instead uses Epo Maker driver software for customization. And the case styling other than the LCD screen is, is also just a little bit more traditional than the Shadow S here. And there's a price difference of $15 as well because the Shadow X is $85.99 while the Shadow S is $99.99. So now that we're clear on the differences between the models, let's cover the features and specs of the Shadow S and then we'll do our usual pros and cons. The Epo Maker Shadow S is a TKL layout keyboard with 85 keys and encoder knob and a 1.14 inch color LCD screen and an ANSI layout. It is not currently available in an ISO layout. The construction is ABS plastic for the case and there are two color options available, white and brown or pink and white. The dimensions are 368 by 143 millimeters with a rear height of 45 millimeters including the keycaps. The weight is 1000 grams or 2.2 pounds. There are two position fold-out feet for a total of three typing angles. Connectivity includes Bluetooth for three devices, 2.4 gigahertz with 500 hertz polling rate, and USB-C wired also with 500 hertz polling. Internal components include a flex-cut polycarbonate plate and hot swappable PCB with kale sockets compatible with three and five pin switches. The mounting is foam sandwich style gaskets and sound dampening includes foam between the PCB and plate, a switch pad, under PCB foam, and a silicone pad in the case bottom. The stabilizers are plate mounted. There is support on the PCB for screw and stabilizers. However, it appears the included plate may not support them due to the shape of the cutouts. Switch options include Epo Maker Mulan, Flamingo and Wisteria linear switches or Sea Salt silent linear switches. The keycaps are die sub PBT and are not shined through. Backlighting includes full south facing RGB with key commands to control the brightness and modes. The battery capacity is 4000 mAh and Epo Maker does not provide an estimated use time on their website. The Shadow S includes QMK firmware with VIA compatibility for customization on Windows, Mac, and Linux. There is also a physical switch for Windows and Mac layout modes. The LCD screen can be customized with Epo Maker's Image Customize application, which at the time of recording is available on Windows only. The Shadow S is available from Epo Maker and Amazon for $99.99 US. This keyboard actually has several things in common with the TH80 Pro V2, which I recently reviewed. The most obvious is the LCD screen here in the top right corner, which appears to be exactly the same and has the same functionality. It even comes with the same default GIFs built into it. But there are also a few other similarities. Both have QMK firmware with VIA for customization, as well as the Epo Maker Image Customize app for customizing the LCD screen. And they share a lot of internal components as well, including a flex cut polycarbonate plate, gasket mounting using the foam sandwich style mounts, south facing RGB, and the wireless connectivity is also the same and has the same polling rates. They do have different sockets on the PCB though. The TH80 Pro V2 has JWIC sockets and here we have kale sockets. What's not the same, however, is the styling or the typing sound. They do have different switches though, at least the samples that I received. So that will be part of the difference. So let's get into some pros and cons for the Shadow S starting with the pros. 
First of all, in terms of the connectivity options, I had the same experience that I had with the TH80 Pro V2, which is to say that the wireless connections were very stable for me. 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth were both stable, didn't experience any bugginess with them. And also the wake up time of the 2.4 gigahertz connection was actually a little bit better than what I experienced with the TH80 Pro V2. So even though the connections and the polling rates are the same between those two, something else must be different here because I had a little bit of a better experience with the Shadow S. Another pro here is the LCD screen has a useful default screen with a battery level, your operating system mode, and your connection mode. So even if you're not really big into using the LCD screen and customizing it, the default screen is useful. The QMK firmware with via customization is another pro, but there is something I will mention in the cons as far as the overall customization experience. I also like that you have a physical switch for the OS layout and pre-programmed key commands for controlling the screen and the lighting. I like having my QMK firmware for the, the consistency of via customizations with remapping and macros, but I also appreciate it when manufacturers give you pre-programmed options for some of the more basic functions that you don't have to go build yourself. The typing feel here is also good. It's not super bouncy as those sandwich style foam gasket mounts would suggest, but there is a little flex thanks to the uh, those those gaskets and the flex cuts in the, the polycarbonate plate. But if you're worried about the flex cuts thinking it's gonna be like way too flexible, it's really not overly flexible. I wouldn't call it bouncy. You do have to press quite a bit to actually get that real up and down movement. It's got a little bit of that cushioned bouncy feel, but definitely not overly so. The last pro that I'll mention here is just, I think it's nice to have both the LCD and the encoder knob. The encoder knob is fine. It's it's really not like the encoder knob itself isn't really a pro. It's got a little bit of wobble to it, but having both the LCD screen and the knob, I think is a pro so that you're not trading one for the other. And as far as the sound goes, there are no objectively bad sounds here out of the box. There aren't really modifications that I would do to fix something. It would really just be tuning it to my personal taste. That being said, sound is subjective. So let's move on into the neutral category between pros and cons, where I always mention a few things that, you know, maybe pros or cons varying on your perspective, or they're things that maybe just don't fit in a pro or a con. Now here in this neutral category, I am gonna mention the construction. Now I'm putting it here between pros and cons because, well, it's fine. I don't have any major complaints about the construction quality. They did make a couple of interesting choices here. For example, you have both screws and there are also plastic clips here. I actually got a little bit excited when I first flipped this over and saw the screws because I thought, hey, they made disassembly easier than the TH80 Pro V2, which is all plastic clips and it's kind of difficult to pry it open. But when I removed the screws and then tried to remove the top of the case, I realized that along the sides, there are also plastic clips here. Now they're not super difficult to pull apart, thankfully. So overall, I would say disassembly is a tad easier than the TH80 Pro V2, but construction quality in general, you know, it is all plastic. It's not what I would call like really above average construction quality. So I'm not counting it as a pro. However, it's also not like disappointing or poor quality at all. So I'm not counting it as a con. Now also here in this neutral space, I have to mention the battery life. Now the battery with the lighting off should be pretty good because it is a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And if you're not using the backlighting, then you know you should be able to get what I would expect to be three to four weeks of use time. You do have a little battery level indicator on the default screen on the LCD there, so you can monitor it, which is good, but Epo Maker doesn't provide an estimated battery life on their website or in the manual for the Shadow S, so I don't know what they expect you to get out of it. Now, the last thing I'm gonna mention here in this neutral category before we talk cons is the keycaps. They're die sub PBT in a Cherry Profile, so you know not much to say about Cherry Profile. The quality of the Legends is pretty good. As far as crispness, they are pretty good for die sub, which generally is a little bit less crisp than double shot. The centering on them, you know, it's not perfect. For example, if you look at the R key on my sample, it looks a tad askew compared to the other uh, legends. It's not really noticeable unless you're like staring right at it. And the other thing that I would say is that for this particular color option, the color choice of the legends on the darker accent keys is gonna be a little bit hard to read in lower light because it's a dark font on a dark color background. Other than that though, I don't have any major complaints about the keycaps. In terms of their thickness, they're good. They feel like nice and solid. They don't feel thin or too light or anything. So they kind of are in between a pro and a con. All right, there are a couple cons to talk about here. First of all, the customization experience, in my opinion, is a little bit clunky because you have to use two separate pieces of software 
for remapping and macros and then customizing the screen. You have VIA to customize your remapping and macros because you have QMK firmware, but for the screen, you don't have a choice. You have to use Epo Maker's own image customized software because it, you cannot do that screen customization with VIA. And I didn't have a problem using the image customized software. It's just a matter of consistency that you have to use two different things to do your customizations on the keyboard that make it a little bit of a clunky experience. So you may or may not be bothered by that, but the bigger con here is that the image customized software is currently only available on Windows as of the time I'm recording this. So it may become available on Mac later, but as of right now, you can only customize the LCD if you have a Windows computer. So that that's a little bit of a bigger con. All right, another con that's not that big of a deal, but something to keep in mind if you are intending on using a keyboard for any gaming, the polling rates of the 2.4 gigahertz and wired connections are 500 hertz. So that's something to be aware of if you intend to use it for gaming. It's not a huge deal and it really doesn't make a difference if you're not doing any gaming. If you're doing typical productivity work with your keyboard, then it's totally fine. I'm only mentioning it in the cons here because there are competitors in this price range that offer 1000 hertz polling, which makes them more capable for gaming use. And that would be options like the Keychron V3 Max, cost $94, but you get higher polling rates on the 2.4 gigahertz and wired connections. The only thing it's missing is the LCD screen. Now there's really not that much else to complain about here other than you know getting nitpicky. It doesn't mean this keyboard is perfect for everyone. It just means I didn't experience any other you know really significant cons or problems with it. So let's talk about whether I would recommend this keyboard to anybody who's shopping for a TKL keyboard around the $100 price point. In comparison to the market, there are some competitors that offer similar keyboards with a few better specs like the Keychron V3 Max that I mentioned just a minute ago. That would be one main competitor to consider. Now another direction you could go would be the Galaxy 80, also available from Epo Maker, which I reviewed a couple months ago and I really liked it. You get an all aluminum keyboard. You do lose QMK firmware in favor of Epo Maker's driver software, and you also don't get an LCD screen. But if you're looking for a little bit more of that like heavier, more premium feeling TKL, but still at a value friendly price, then the Galaxy 80 was a really nice option. So that'll do it for my review of the Shadow S from Epo Maker. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Shadow S. Let me know if you picked one up for yourself and how you're liking it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Semi Pro Tech and Gear channel. And while you're here, why don't you check out one of these videos? I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thanks everybody. See you next time.